Taurus, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for June 2018 and Taurus, I have to tell you that even though we've got a Mars retrograde coming, which is going to be right at the tip top of your chart, which tells me that your purpose, your calling, your professional life is going to get a huge re-strategizing and organization, this is actually a really delicious month for you. You've got some earned income and talent opportunities that I think are absolutely brilliant. So let's just jump in here and talk about it. And I'm going to say this. As a Taurus, I think we have to be grateful this month that we have the gift of patience, okay? Because we are really going to need that junk this month. Okay, so let's jump in here and talk about this. Right at the beginning of the month, we've got Mercury coming along um, with Venus, who's already in Cancer, but Mercury's going to come into Cancer on the 12th here and be there all the way until the end of the month, and this is in your third house. So I really like this energy for you. This is such a beautiful energy for anything communication related. Maybe you're working on a website, you're trying to bring harmony there, you're working on your YouTube, you're journaling, you're writing, you're... Um, in, in my case, I know that I have a new blog coming out that I'm excited to share with you guys. Whatever it is, this is just a beautiful energy to wrap some harmony around this, bring it and push it forward. Then we get to the 13th of this month and we've got a new moon happening in the sign of Gemini. At the same time, Venus is going to be moving into Leo, into your fourth house. So now we have this super rocking energy happening with the new moon. This Gemini energy hits your second house. This is the house of earned income, the way that you make money, money being able to come to you, your talents, your gifts that you're cultivating and putting out into the world to not only bring value, remind you of your value, but also bring money to you. Then we've got Venus over here in Leo and she's rocking it in your fourth house all through the month. This brings so much delicious harmony to your home, right? Now, when I look at these two energies together, what I think is, first of all, the new moon says we need to plant these seeds of intention. What do you want here? What is the skill? What is the talent that you had? Maybe Taurus, you even have a talent you didn't know that you had. Maybe you've had a business idea. Maybe you've been thinking about something. You want to initiate something. The new moon is the time for initiation. You've been coming up with it. Even if it's been floating in the back of your mind and it sounds crazy, the new moon is the time to start it. If you work from home, Venus is giving you delicious love to get that work from home business going, right? So this is the time to plant those seeds of intention so the next four weeks you can watch them play out. And I will tell you too, because we've got Mars going retrograde in the second half of the month, you want to start, you want to initiate something new. The beginning of the month, especially this new moon, is really the time to do it. I'm really excited for you to see what you've got coming to the table. So don't be surprised if you don't have a couple of pennies trickling your way. Really good stuff. When we get to the 14th of the month, we actually have Venus and Uranus in a square. This is their second and their last one that they're doing for the year. What this can actually cause is a little bit of upset. Now, this is going to be happening between your fourth house and your first house. So you in your house, you could be adjusting, you in your home, your foundational level ideas. And let me tell you, this shakeup, this square, whenever you see a square, a square in astrology means the universe is going to put you under enough pressure that you have to take a new action to change. So use this square. If you feel stuck, if it feels tight, if it feels tense, if it feels like, oh my God, who am I? It's fine. Use your square because somewhere between your foundation level beliefs or your physical home, you're going to get into enough pressure that you are going to act very Uranian. You're going to take a new action and that action is probably innovative, intuitive, and new and moving you forward. And most of all, brilliant. So if you've been feeling uncomfortable right where you're at, this is a wonderful energy to grow, but it can cause a little bit of upset. And sometimes you got to just have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough. You know what I'm saying? So if you find yourself under pressure, use it it's good when we get to the 15th of the month we actually have mercury and saturn this is a peak of it in an opposition this again can be a very grounding and it can feel like the energy of no right it can feel like a very stern energy this is happening between your third and your ninth house so if you're trying to put something out there you're trying to communicate you're trying to broadcast in some way and it feels like it's not going anywhere or you're feeling like is anybody out there listening to me if you're studying something and you're feeling like oh my goodness this is a tense energy, but again, what this opposition I think is great for 
is for you to enjoy the slowdown of the month and understand that you're just, you may just be having a delay. If you're trying to get something out there, people are gonna catch the buzz. They are gonna get it. It just may be a little bit delayed. Delayed does not mean no, and I want you to hear that, okay? You already don't love change, my fellow Torrens. I get it, but not now doesn't mean no, okay? When we get to the 18th, Neptune is going to be taking a retrograde all the way until November. Now, this is in your 11th house. Why I think this is so beautiful to make sure it's in the forecast is, first of all, because you know that we're in a transit, right? The other part is that Neptune is an outer planet, so it can be very, very quiet and subtle in how we feel its influence. In your 11th house, I think that this is very quietly giving you an opportunity to relook at your spirituality connected to your hopes and your dreams and your goals going forward. Have you just been rushing out I need to make money have you just been rushing out I need to get this done the deal is my Taurus friends we straighten out spiritually then financially mentally emotionally and physically those things follow always in that order so with this very subtle energy back here I think a beautiful question to be asking is where am I at in my spiritual beliefs or my spiritual practices around friends organizations are you tapping into an organization that can support you this is the 11th house do you have friends in your tribe is it time to get some new friends who maybe have a better spiritual understanding of money of value of whatever it is that you're trying to begin tap in here this is a wonderfully subtle energy don't let it pass you by when we get to the 21st, the sun is moving into Cancer. Yes, queen, it is summertime. I am so excited to really get my shoulders out, enjoy some of this sunshine. And in Western astrology, we follow the seasons, not the constellations. So we're in a fresh beginning. We're in a new season, you guys. This is exciting stuff. At the same time, Venus and Mars are going to be doing their annual opposition to each other. And this helps you see some things differently, right? This helps you get a new perspective perspective on some things. So if you've been feeling like home is weird, if you've been feeling like your education, your communication, your broadcasting is weird, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to come to the other side and get a new fresh perspective that can keep you active, right? Show you how to get out of your own way. When we get to the 26th, here it is. Here's the hot news for the month. Mars is going to take this retrograde over here in Aquarius, and it's going to be retrograde all the way until the end of August, okay? Now, this is at the tippy top of your chart. This is up here at that midheaven, Taurus, so in your professional zone. Mars retrogrades has re, re-look at the strategy, re-look at the desire, re-look at the energy, re-look at the action. What actions are you taking? So this is how I know. You're going to professionally or in whatever your calling is, whatever it is that you're doing to give to the world, you're going to be re-looking at these things. This is, do not freak out. It doesn't mean everybody's going to lose their job. That's not what this is about. This is about the actions and the energies that you're putting into something. You've got to come to a new perspective. This retrograde is a gift from the universe. If it's not working, you can't move something forward. If you feel stuck, you have got to be able to come to another perspective on the action. And this is Aquarian energy that you're working with, right? So it's going to be visionary. It's going to be innovative, right? It's, it's the best of Mars and Aquarius coming together. So this could also be a time too where maybe you're having to look at what's the direction you want to take your business in. What are you really good at? What are you really giving to the people? out there, right? What do you want to be known for? This is your reputation. Whatever you're doing in the world, whether you own your own business or you work for a company, your reputation is what you're walking into the business and the world with every day. Is it known for something solid that you want to be known for, right? Are you putting in the, the, enough and the right kind of action into what you want to be known for? You are likely as well, because Aquarius is our technological energy, you're going to have to relook at your technology. Maybe you need an upgrade. Maybe you need to look at, you know, do you, is there some area of technology that you're not addressing? Um, if you have YouTube, are you using your analytics, right? Whatever it is professionally, you're going to get a little bit of a shake up here. And it is a re-strategizing kind of energy for you. So use it. Remember this retrograde is a gift. It's not a curse. So if you are uncomfortable, you see where you need to change. And do not be afraid to get a new teacher. Do not be afraid to reach out into the big wide world of YouTube or 
group things. Aquarius is over groups and friends, right? Reach out there, watch a tutorial, learn to do something new if it helps meet your strategy, meet your goals, meet your desire. Okay, I'm off the box. Okay, when we get to the 28th of the month, we've got the full moon happening down here in Capricorn. Saturn's also here. You've been working on some stuff in this ninth house. My students, I feel you. You've been growing up, haven't you? You've been growing up, haven't you? If you're trying to broadcast something out, the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So what I know is that you could be finishing a project and broadcasting it out to the world. You could be finishing something and you're going to start teaching. You could be finishing teaching. Um, you could be finishing a project. Um, all of these things could be having some culmination to them. But one of the things I think it's getting you set up and in position to is to out in the world more maturely um, and out in the world um, broadcast something that will have some permanence to it, right? It's going to have good commitment, good long-term sticking energy to it. So it's really, really brilliant. Whatever ends for you, I look forward to hearing about it because it's also an instant new beginning. Now, whatever's ending, um, if it's not ending quickly enough for you, which is funny to say that to a Taurus, don't worry about it. You're just in a Mars retrograde. Nothing is going to happen quickly here, okay? On the 29th, we've got Mercury leaving Cancer, moving into Leo. It's going to be here for a very long time because we've got some retrograde energy happening in here as well. But this is the, in your fourth house. And I love this because I think that this is chatty energy. This is, you can have some conversations at home. Maybe you want to redecorate. Maybe your foundational level beliefs of who you are as a person, these foundations you've been standing on, you just have all of these new ideas about them, new business ideas, new communication ideas. Maybe you just really like your family this month and you're like you know what I don't know what happened but you guys are just phenomenal people whatever it is Mercury here is very good at decision making as well so if you are starting to look for a new place to live I think that this is a wonderful energy as well I wouldn't jump into any new initiated contracts or anything until August if you can't avoid it but this is a beautiful beautiful energy okay all right, Taurus, I think it's going to be a good month. I'm so grateful that you're a patient clan because <laughs> that's going to serve you well. And with this professional stuff, I'm telling you, no does not mean right, not right now. And be prepared to relook at this. The universe is trying to help you be the very best that you can be out there. So use your retrograde time as a gift, not a curse, okay? I love you guys. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next month.